Welcome back. Let's move straight into the action for the Singapore Cricket Club PayPal 2020 tournament. There were eight teams divided into two groups of four each. The top two in each group would then move on to the semi-final. So each team had three group games which were played at the SEC and Colour Cricket Ground. The first game played at the Padang was between Melbourne Cricket Club and the Singapore Cricket Club in Group A. MCC won the toss and put SEC to bat. Andre de Langer and Rob Hands opened for the hosts and got the innings off to a good start. A 38-run opening stand before Hands was run out. SEC continued to build on the innings, de Langer going on to score a well-paced 29 before Rob Cooper got the crucial wicket of de Langer. SCC's middle order failed to convert that good start into a big total, losing six wickets for just 44 runs added. SCC in a precarious position at 102 for eight, Cooper taking three wickets in total. Aaron Vijayan tried to steady the innings with a hard-fought 14 as SCC ran out of overs to finish on 127 for nine. Melbourne responded with a blistering innings from Rob Cooper. After losing Andrew Kent's wicket in the third over, Cooper and Will Ryan took control of MCC's chase. Cooper hitting nine sixes and six fours on his way to an explosive 99 of 41 balls. Ryan played the anchor roll to a T. Unfortunately, Cooper had to retire hurt, one run short of his century after being hit by a ball in his face. But MCC were well on their way to victory. Ryan and Simon Dart bringing it home with 8.1 overs to spare. MCC winning it easily by nine wickets. Defending champion Singalee Sports Club opened their campaign against the Royal Selangor Club in the Group B tie at SCC. RSC won the toss and chose to field. Sri Lankan international Nuan Zoysa opened the innings with Dimuth Karuratna and the duo got off to a flying start, putting on 33 in under three overs before Karunaratna fell to Suresh Navaratnam. That brought another Sri Lankan international to the field in Tilan Kandambi. He and Zoysa added a quick-fire 25 before Navaratnam took out danger man Zoysa. SSC continued to build on the total with handy partnerships in the middle overs, but also lost wickets at regular intervals. Lasith Fernando and Suchitra Senanayaka really took control of the innings. A 92-run sixth wicket stand saw them take the total past 180 runs. Fernando going on to top score with 53. RSC found the breakthrough in the end, taking three wickets in the last two overs for just two runs added. SSC though, finishing on a defendable 192 for eight in their 20 overs. RSC's reply got off to the worst possible start, losing both their openers by the time the third over was bowled, Chaminda Bandara claiming both wickets. RSC's batsmen never really got back in the game till the very end, only one of their top five bats managing double figures. SSC's bowlers sharing the spoils as RSC were teetering at 59 for six in the ninth over. Hassan Gulam and Sat Gunasingam resisting a mighty collapse with a hard-fought 20-run stand at the end. But it all came crashing down when skipper Kandambi bowled both of them and took the next wicket of Viranga to send RSC packing for 95. SSC thrashing their opponents with a 97-run victory. It must have been really difficult for RSC to play their second group game immediately after. This time they faced the Singapore Cricket Association team. SCA won the toss and opted to bat. But it was RSC who benefited early on, getting danger man Chetan Suryavanshi out for a duck in the first over. Despite the setback, Chaminda Ruan took it upon himself to get the runs. He, alongside Shitit Shinde, put on a 110-run stand for the 10th wicket. Ruan scoring an explosive 111 off 62 balls, while Shinde got a well-deserved 51 before he fell victim to Siddharth Krishnadas. SCA going on to finish on 177 for four. RSC's reply didn't start too well. Openers Damith Warusu and Suresh Singh just managing 22 on the board before Singh fell to Suryavanshi. Mohamedullah Khan steadied the innings alongside Sheikh Nasser and then Rohan Solvaratnam. But even the weather gods went against them. Ray disrupting the match for RSC to end on 118 for four in 15.4 overs. And with the umpires unable to resume the game, Duckworth Lewis was brought in. Based on the calculations, the target at 15.4 overs would have been 134. Therefore, RSC losing this one too by 16 runs.
The final game at the Padang on day one was between Melbourne Cricket Club and Madras Cricket Club. Madras won the toss and elected to bat, a decision that did not work for them. Melbourne's Aaron Boyle striking early on with the ball. Madras in real trouble, losing their top three bats in the first four overs with just 15 runs on the board. Unfortunately, it didn't get much better for the Indian side. Former Indian international Hemang Badani, one of three batsmen to reach double figures. Sean Starrick and Chris Yannick ripped through the middle order with two wickets apiece. Madras suffering an almighty collapse with silly runouts in the end to finish on 71 all out. Melbourne's top order also struggled, with both openers falling early during Gary Dumanil's overs. Matthew Brown single-handedly fought against the tide, his 41 proving absolutely crucial as the wickets around him continued to fall. But the two Matthews, Brown and Begbie, eventually took Melbourne home, finishing on 73 for four in 11.3 overs. Melbourne winning by six wickets. Day two at the Padang saw South Africa's Rowland Cricket Academy face Royal Selango Club. Rowland won the toss and chose to bat. The decision seemed to have backfired when they lost the wicket of skipper Johan Furia in the very first over. Matthew Wright and JP de Klerk tasked with rebuilding the innings, and they didn't get too far as de Klerk was run out two overs later. RSC Suresh Navaratnam was once more amongst the wickets, taking a total of three for 14. Rowland's batsmen failed to stick around long enough to get the innings back on track. They lost their next five players for just 24 runs added. Taylander Uli van Doika top scored with an unbeaten 28 and Rowland managed 97 for 9 in 20 overs. RSC's innings also started off in a similar fashion. Damith Arusu out for a duck on the very first ball. Fellow opener Suresh Singh followed in the next over with just seven runs on the board. Mohamedullah Khan once again came to RSC's rescue. His resilient 23 kept the scoreboard ticking as wickets around him continued to fall. Rowland's Dana Dupreeze ripping through the top order with figures of 3 for 9. It was Muhammad's 20-run partnership with Suresh Navaratnam that pulled things back in RSC's favour. Navaratnam going on to top score with 30 as RSC just edged Rowland for a one-wicket win to finish third in Group B and book a place in the ball final. Rowland knocked out of the tournament. Uh, the experience was very good. Uh, beautiful country. Uh, it was actually very difficult for the boys to adapt to the heat. Uh, maybe uh, learning a lot and uh, we'll take uh, a lot of uh, experience back home and then hopefully when you come back next year we'll be more competitive. Exposure, uh, I think it's the, the level higher that uh, the, the boys play at home where most of the, our players are club cricketers and uh, a lot of these teams have got first class international players in their teams uh, and then uh, my players could see uh, how much harder they must work to reach that level. The final group stage in SCC was played between Melbourne CC and Kowloon CC. Kowloon won the toss and opted to bat. Unfortunately for the Hong Kong team, they were completely outplayed by their Aussie opponents. Kowloon losing their first three wickets in 2.4 overs. Aaron Boyle and Dan Worrell amongst the wickets. Kowloon's Peter Wooden was the only batsman to put up any kind of fight. His 24 would go on to be the top score for the team, and he was one of just two batsmen managing double figures. Matthew Brown and Boyle tearing through the middle order, leaving Kowloon in serious trouble at 31 for 7 at the halfway mark. It didn't get any better, the remaining three wickets falling as Kowloon just about crossed the 50 run mark. Brown with the best bowling figures of 3 for 9, restricting Kowloon to just 54 all out in 14.1 overs. Melbourne's reply was short and sweet. Openers Andrew Kent and Simon Dart rushing towards the target. Kent's 24 coming off just 13 balls, including three fours and a six, before falling to Peter Wooden. Melbourne at a comfortable 41 for one at this point. And that would be Carlin's only wicket, as Dart and James Gillard finished things off without breaking much of a sweat. Dart's 12 and Gillard's 10 runs ensured Melbourne clinched this one with ease.
The nine-wicket loss meant Kowloon were out of the tournament, allowing SEC to finish third and earn a place in the bowl final. So that completes the group stages. There were a total of 12 matches in that round. Six were played here at Kalang, six at the Padang. We focused solely on the games at the SEC. Now, the semi-finalists consisted of Singalese Sports Club and Melbourne Cricket Club from Group A, and SCA and Madras Cricket Club from Group B. Coming up, we'll take a look at those knockout stages.